Hi Felters and welcome, my name is Philippa if you're new and if you've come back to see me again, thank you very much. Um, I run a small business and I like to sort of record some of the things I do throughout the month just to show other people what I do and what they could do if they wanted to start a small business. So it's the 13th already and I'm not going to do loads of videoing this month because I'm just going to show you a few of the things I've been doing and then we're going to do a review of the year and I also want to look at what I said I wanted to do this year last year what my goals were and what actually happened um, so I can set more realistic goals for the future so I did my um, there you go sorry about the light oh there you go I did my sheep uh, picture which I was really really pleased with I'm going to do some more I really like the box frame I think it's lovely so I think that works really well and then I just have finished and um, it's coming out in the next few days I don't know if the camera will there we go it's a uh, roast dinner felted so it was a really good fun one to do but this is my desk and what it looks like now uh, basically it's me trying to keep up with kits I thought it would slow down a bit but I've still been selling quite a few kits and I will at the end of the video uh, sort of tot up how many kits I've sold in total but basically it's quite boring for you guys but that's what I've been doing is sort of um, keeping up with the kits making sure I've got enough stuff uh, my needles sort of were just running out and because if my kit is on Etsy and it's in people's baskets and then it goes sold out it falls out of everyone's basket so it's in like the Highland Cow Kit is in 20 people's baskets. So that's quite a lot of people that have noted it down and are thinking about it. And if it falls out of their basket, I don't want them to sort of be like, oh, well, what, whose kit was it? I can't remember. So I want to keep it in their basket. So I don't want it to run out. But I don't like saying I've got kits when I haven't got all the stuff and I haven't got them ready made. I like them ready made. So um, as you can see, the shelves are a little bit low. I've just got five sheep kit up there, but um, I've got enough stuff. I'm going to make up another 10 Highland cow kits. So that seems to be what I'm doing. Can you imagine if you had like lots of kits? That's what you'd be doing all the time. It really is. Anyway, November was a great month. I sort of rounded up how much I sold uh, for my patrons. I, I do everything in a little bit more depth over there. And it was really, really good. And YouTube was excellent. So thank you very much for being here and for watching my videos because it, it means um, an awful lot to me to be able to earn money through YouTube. is it, It's a huge part of my income. So thank you. Right. So I'm going to get on. I've got Christmas llama. So I do these kits. Christmas llama. Um, I've got a lesson with my daughter in a minute. Walk the dogs. And well, it's the usual routine. So And we've had a little bit of snow. I'll show you some of the lovely weather as well that we've been having. This is my neighbour's cat. <laughs> we are looking after her at the moment, but she gets really bored. So it's nice of her to come in. Just in my office, because the dogs go mad, I've shut the door. This is Tiger. <laughs> um, so I was just going to have a chat with you very quickly. Um, everybody must know it by now. Royal Mail are on strike, people. Come on. Stop messaging me saying, can you post this before Christmas? Um, I literally had one probably a day ago. And it's second class postage on there. You can choose first class postage on my um, items. And it says, so they posted it second class. Can you deliver before Christmas? This is a Christmas present. And I literally have it 
all over my listings. I have it on my front page of my shop. No Christmas delivery anymore. And then also I have it at the top of the heading, the top of the listing of the two in particular, which are doing really well, which are the kits. And still they message me. It was a bloke. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so uh, lots of messaging back saying, he said, well, I'll pay first class. And I said, even that doesn't guarantee it. Even next day delivery doesn't guarantee it. So I said, look, you know, I'd quite happily pay for first class. It's not a problem. And I have been um, sending all of my parcels first class, actually. Um, even though everyone's paid for second, I'm just so worried about stuff not getting there. But I'd rather at least if they come back to me and say, oh, it didn't arrive, you know, that's really bad. I'll be like, well, I sent it first class as well. I really did try. I did everything I could and I had all my warnings up. Most people are really absolutely fine with it but lots of small businesses are getting a lot of grief over this so oh there we go are we going to settle down i think you remember tiger she was in a couple of the videos previously she used to just wander in the window i think before we had the dachshunds the dachshunds would just go mad ow that hurts that hurts but anyway so i've just um ordered some more wool from world of wool really exciting and I'm kind of free. I've got the Christmas llama to do next, but I'm kind of free for a couple of days. I'm going to do a couple of, you do shed, a couple of dog videos. And um, it's kind of weird. I can make what I want. So I might make a, a, a Highland cow. <laughs> so we'll see. Anyway, I'll talk to you in a bit when this one's gone home. Right, let's stop this. Now I've got to turn it off. Can I turn it off? Can I? Can I get to the camera? Tiger, hang on. So I was really pleased that I managed to do my unicorn. I tidied up my shelves a bit, trying to keep some of my online course ones and keep everything sort of neat and together. So here's the unicorn all done. And it really is really simple to adapt from my horse course. It is literally my horse course head with a unicorn horn. So it's not too hard. This is Christmas llama, which is not going to be Christmas llama now. But you'll see I just didn't end up having time. I did start and there's all my wool order to make up more kits yet again. So yeah, this is Wentworth Garden Centre and I do like to include things like this because when I go there and look around, it really inspires me to go back with certain felts and certain ideas. These aren't real antlers, they I just thought they were absolutely beautiful. This is the Christmas section. Um, we always like to go to a good garden centre with lots of Christmas stuff, but this has so many things that you can look at and adapt and oh my goodness, mushrooms! There's so many mushrooms, it was incredible. I sort of came back buzzing with lots of ideas of lots of look see look at that hedgehog it's really similar to my head shroom but the mushrooms on the top but there were so many sort of inspirational ideas so I really 
do think it's good to go and look at these places and you're not going to copy you're going to sort of adapt and make it your own style um look at these even pink mushrooms really really beautiful and it was so well displayed there the way they put everything out and they've got this new restaurant called the bothy look at the entrance hall to this we would love to go back and try and eat there at some point but yeah so it was just really nice to go out go for a look around buy a few bits and bobs then we were on to christmas uh, this is christmas morning we couldn't put the presents out early because the dogs would have had them <laughs> so we put them out christmas eve um, then we had lovely dinner, but look, we had hailstones. The weather's been so peculiar lately. Um, this is Christmas llama, which is now just going to be llama. And I'm making good progress, but I had to put the llama down because even after Christmas, people are still ordering more kits, which is really lovely. It's fantastic, everybody. So here I am making up a few more kits. <laughs> Constantly checking to see if I've pressed record. It's ridiculous, and I'm trying to cover up. So it's ridiculously low. Oh, the dogs are making noise. <sighs> so, Felters, it's the 30th today, 30th of December 2022. Um, I'm going to do this day early. I'm sure you won't mind if I miss out a day on the figures, but I have rounded up all my figures and I'm just going to check and look at what I wanted to achieve last year and whether I achieved it. So first off, um, figures. So I'm going to do a podcast and go through everything in a little bit more detail and look at all the different ways that I earn money and how well each one did. So I've got Patreon, Amazon Affiliates, Etsy, Thinkific, Crafez, YouTube, Unity. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's all the ways I earn money. As you can see, I like to diversify. Um, and in total, my turnover, so not my profit, was 20,811. Can you do needle felting as a job? I would say yes, if you learn to diversify. So last year I made 16,000 and something, and my costs were about 4,000. So this year, my costs are gonna be at least 6,000 because of the kits in particular. So I reckon that takes it down. Uh, when I worked it all out, it was 1233 per month profit-ish. I won't know until the end of the tax year. It's really difficult to work it all out exactly. Um, basically, my goal last year, I set and said, I want to try and achieve 1250 each month. So I've nearly achieved that. So I'm really pleased. I only want this to be a one-man band, by the way. I never want to have loads of people working for me. Um, it, I just want it to be a business that I can do. So obviously there's going to be a degree of a, not a limit. You're not supposed to say there's a limit on what you can earn, but I want there to be a degree of it. It's just me doing it. So I'm not going to have massive aims and ever turn around and go, I want to earn 5,000 pounds a month. You know, 1,250 is a lot of money. And even for me to set it next year at 1,500 pounds, because that would be the correct sort of ratio to go up, would be quite a lot of money I'm you know I'm not sure I'm quite happy where I am I don't want to be working I, I can't work too much at the moment so so anyway I was really happy with that can you you know make this a business yes you can um I wanted to and my aims last year were 10 courses online courses I achieved three so <laughs> I think I have wild ambitions here with the courses I really do. They just take far too long to do. I did the horse head, which was really popular, the sitting Highland Cow Hugo and the standing Highland Cow Hazel. And, and I'm really pleased with those courses. I'm really proud of them. I wanted to achieve five PDFs more on top of my PDFs I've already got. And I did six. So I did really well there. So really, really pleased with that. I wanted to have my website up and running and I had just purchased it last year. So I knew I'd do it, but it was setting aside the time to do it because it takes a few weeks. And my website's up and running. Um, I do sell one kit on there. I've got to add the other kit. So I don't really sell that much on there because I like Etsy because it sorts out all the uh, taxes, sort of custom things. Uh, even though 
So basically when somebody buys on my website, I, they do it through PayPal, I still get charged about seven or eight percent of um, purchase price to do the transaction through PayPal. So that's quite a lot. When you go to Etsy, that's 12 to 15 percent and they sort out all the taxes. It That's, you know, I'm not too unhappy about it. I know so many people saying Etsy so expensive, but I still really like it. And I looked at my Etsy figures and I sold a lot more on Etsy this year because of the kits. But 70% of all my traffic came from Etsy. 30% was driven from myself, from my YouTube channel um, and Instagram and things like that. So it's still an awful lot that Etsy is doing for me. So I'm quite happy with it. I also wanted an accountant. I have an accountant. I pay them monthly. Um, I've yet to go through the first load of books with them. I'd love to be trying to do it all online properly. And they showed me how to. Um, and I've just got to spend probably about a week trying to do that but yeah so I have an accountant I'm really happy then I also said I wanted to maybe think about a book in a few years if I felt I had enough stuff do you know I don't think I'm going to do a book there's so many good books out there all my stuff is available on pdfs and online I find it very hard in a book to convey exactly how to needle felt sorry that's just the children going past so I'm not I'm still not sure about the book I'm not going to put that as a goal this year to try and achieve a book next year so what else did I achieve that I didn't think I was going to do so two kits which I'm really pleased with actually um so I started the kits I don't know what was it, September October time so the Highland Cow kit came first and I've sold 73 of those and then the sheep kits I've only just released quite recently so 23 of those so it's nearly 100 kits and if you think of it as uh, £10 a kit, so that's about £1,000 profit. I say profit, it's my labour to put it all together. So, yeah, I quite like them. I, I'm going to keep doing them. They're a really good alternative to me felting all the time um, and causing any sort of pain in the shoulder area. So that's why I do like them. Um, I'm really pleased with them, but I don't want to be packaging kits every day for you know the rest of my life but I love that people can buy kits because they come across the Highland cows and it's just so much easier isn't it if someone has a kit for it and the instructions and everything um, so really pleased with my two kits I also developed some cards which I love and think they're really good my notepad don't know why I'm so proud of that but it's just really sweet it's cute and it's a really good extra just to have on the table when I go to craft fairs. I did a jumper as well, my needle felting addict jumper. I'll put a picture up here. And podcast, I also started to develop the podcast. And as I said, I've done my website, accountant and a book, right? So the other thing I've got to do, right? I'll look towards the future now. Um, I would like to do two more kits. I know exactly what kits I want to do. They're in my head. Um, and as I just said, I don't want to be packaging kits all day, but I think these will be really good kits. I'll be happy with them and you know what if people I should be grateful that people are willing to purchase my kits and for me to sit there and make up kits say five six seven days of the month and to earn money from that I should be grateful for that and I should embrace it and do it so that's why there are two kits in particular that I'm thinking about um before the kits really I need to develop a couple of main online courses uh, two big events that I am hoping to apply for doesn't mean I'll get them which is Yarndale so if you're around in September um, in Skipton please come up and see me and uh, Holmfirth Art Week I'm also doing two craft fairs which I've just put in for I obviously have my Patreon and I'm going to keep my Patreon it's at 95 patrons at the moment I let it go up a little bit I can't see that changing I bought the price down for everyone this year from four pounds a month to two pounds fifty and it just reduced a bit of pressure off me for doing tons of extra videos so we just have fun with the zoom calls and the challenges the discord group there's discounts when I release a new course they get it extra discounted and it's just a lovely network of people it's really fantastic so I I don't envisage ever letting my patron go above 100. That is literally my limit, but it's 95 at the moment. Um, a couple of other things for the future. I'm looking at a couple of other products and it might involve a heat press, which I have to buy and that's about two to 300 pound outlay. 
keep going with the podcasts, obviously YouTube. So my priority normally stems as orders from Etsy come first, then YouTube needs to be fulfilled and then I get to do everything else. Um, so YouTube is very, very important to me still. And I've got my Instagram. Also, I was going to go through figures in a sec. Um, and the other thing is I would love to try and keep improving my needle felting. That's something you always need to invest in. Um, the dream would be to go on a Michaela Bartlett course, but it's about £600, the one she did last year. I don't, and I, I just missed out on trying to get it. I, I'm on the email list, but I didn't get the email, but that's definitely one that I would really like to do. So that's something for the future. I was just going to go through figures. Instagram is at 4,012 um, this year. It's just gone up a little bit. It's very slow Instagram for me. I'm absolutely over the moon with 4,000 but it's still very slow and I don't plow. It is what it is. I can't do it all the time. I can't do tons of reels. I just do what I can do on that. I'm quite happy. My podcast is about, it started at about a thousand subscribers, then it dropped down a bit, then it went up. It's like a real roller coaster, but it's between 600 and 800 at the moment. Uh, YouTube is, I went up nearly 20,000 subscribers this year. That's like astonishing. So I've got nearly 47,000 subscribers. On Boxing Day alone, I had 118 people subscribe to my channel. It's, that's loads of people, loads. Like, where are, where do they all come from? It's just fantastic. It's really, really good. The views were 1,106,355. So the views, are, like I said, they, they're what counts. That's what brings in the money, people watching uh, YouTube. So, I've got about 2 million views in total now, I think, on my website, uh, on YouTube, sorry. And then on my website, I get about two to two and a half to 3,000 visitors a month, which is what I really need to put more stuff for sale on there to ultimately utilise and gain. Because those people do, I think, go on there and then they go off to Etsy, go off to the courses. And, and so I think that's how that works. So I think I've covered most things. Uh, Unity Shop, I'm going to adjust that slightly. I might start doing more 2D felts for down there. That way people can't touch things and ruin things. And I think they might work. I've just got to look at the price and the profit margins because 25% is huge. And then the frames cost me five pounds. And, you know, so I don't want to be spending hours doing things that I could be doing more profitable, passive things at home rather than putting things down in a shop that gradually sell and I don't make much money. Um, and I also have a really exciting, <laughs> it's miles away. I don't know why I'm, I'm not going to tell you it, but I've got a really exciting Christmas kit in the planning. So I'm going to be working on that. I'm like so excited about it. I've started felting some of the pieces for it and it will be a kit for you to be able to purchase and to felt along with me. I won't say anything else. So I think that's it. Um, but yes, I do this and I do sit here and say how much I earn so that you can go away and realise that I am a normal mum of two, no particular qualifications to do with being an entrepreneur or being amazing at certain things I can felt, um, and I've been doing it a while, but I have diversified and managed to turn this into a I would say almost a full-time income for some people, but it's definitely a really good part-time income, especially considering the hours that I do, because some days I can't, I cannot spend more than like one to two hours doing this. Other days I will try and do it for more. If I had eight hours a day, it'd be fantastic, but I don't. But yeah, for a job that fits around the children, I'm really happy with it. But absolutely none of this as I always say, would not be possible without you guys watching my videos. That YouTube has been a huge driver for my business. So thank you, basically. Thank you so much for being here time and time and just supporting me and my business. It, you know, I wouldn't be here. Everyone says that, but I wouldn't be here without um, you guys. So thank you. So have a really lovely new year and we'll see you in 2023. Take care, everybody. Bye.